We have a simple layout here. These are the rooms that we need to provide air conditioning. Here is our Asia room. We need to design the duct. So, how are we going to do it? For duct design, we have three methods. Equal friction, static regain and constant velocity. The equal friction method is easier, so we'll use this method to design our duct. For this method, we use a fixed friction loss to size our duct. We can either use the 0.1 inch water gauge or based on the maximum velocity. To figure out what friction loss value to use, we can refer to this table. If our duct will be installed above the ceiling, then we can use 2500 feet per minute if we are using rectangular duct. However, we might want to keep the velocity below 1005 feet per minute for easy air balancing. We start by selecting the supply air diffuser type. Here, I use 4-way ceiling diffuser. For this type of diffuser, we generally want to aim for about 250 to 350 CFM per diffuser. That will decide how many diffuser we need. Before we start sizing the duct, we want to have a rough idea on how the duct runs. Here, I decided to run the supply duct in two sections. One serves two rooms and the other one serves three rooms. I also plan the return duct so that they don't clash onto each other. With that, I can add up the diffuser and calculate how much airflow I need in each duct section. A very easy way to size duct is using the friction loss chart. You can find the link to download this friction loss chart in the video description. We start at the A issue, the airflow is 2000 CFM, then we limit the velocity at 1500 feet per minute. As a result, our duct size is 16 inch. If you are designing for houses in the United States, you might want to follow the ACCA standard which is 900 feet per minute for supply duct and 700 feet per minute for return duct. The friction loss chart gives us the duct size in diameter. If we want to use rectangular duct, we need to calculate the equivalent diameter. We enter the duct width, duct height and press calculate. Now, the equivalent diameter we get is 15 inch. What we need is 16 inch. So, we increase the duct size until we get it. We also can do the same for over duct. You can find the link to this equivalent diameter calculator in the video description. The corresponding friction loss is 0.18 inch water gauge. According to the equal friction method, this will be the friction loss value that we use to size the rest of the duct. We also can reverse the process and use 0.1 inch water gauge as the primary factor to size our duct. Just be sure the velocity does not exceed the recommendations. Next, we size for the 950 CFM branch duct, the 600 CFM branch duct, and the flexible duct for final connection. The flexible duct size not only depends on the friction loss, but it also affects the diffuser noise level. When selecting a diffuser, we get this performance data from the manufacturer. Here, I select 200mm or 8 inches as the next size. At 300cfm or 510cmh, the NC level is 28. We can also use 250mm or 10 inch next size. However, we need to be careful of the branch duct size as the flexible duct needs space for installation. Generally, the branch duct should be 50mm or 2 inches more than the flexible duct. Flexible duct can easily get compressed. To account for that, we can use one size bigger than what is shown in the friction loss chart. If the chart shows 8 inches, we use 10 inches. Once we have all the supply duct sizes, we can go ahead and draw the duct to scale. Based on Smegna duct construction standard, the elbow radius to duct width ratio should be 1.5. Tighter elbow such as 1.0 ratio is also acceptable as X-Ray do provide the database to calculate the pressure drop. As for duct transition, it should be 60 degree for reducer and 45 degree for enlarger. Before we proceed to size the return duct, we want to consider bringing in some fresh air. Generally, the amount of fresh air is about 5-10% to of the supply air. Here, I decided to bring in 10% fresh air which is 200 CFM. Therefore, the return air is 1008 CFM. For the branch duct that tee off the main duct, we can use a 45 degree entry fitting. According to Smegna, the entry angle should be 45 degree and the length of the fitting should be a quarter of the branch duct width or minimum 4 inches. Once we have done with the return duct, we want to add damper to this location. Between the two supply duct, these roofs have more static pressure. Air tends to flow toward duct that has less static pressure. Therefore, we need to block some of the air at the shorter path to get enough air flow into the longer path. As for the fresh air damper, 
we want to control precisely at 10% only. Because we are using the equal friction method, each diffuser should have a small damper for final air balancing. Otherwise, diffuser they are closer to the air issue will have more airflow. So that's how you design a duct system for air conditioning. If you find this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to learn more about heating, ventilation and air conditioning. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.